पद्म श्री जगदीश मित्तल साहब से रिक्वेस्ट है कि वो माइक पे तशरीफ लाए फ्रेंड्स आई एम रियली डेलाइटेड जो टुडे एन इंटरनेशनल सेमिनार ऑन बीजापुर हैज बीन ऑर्गेनाइज बाय द मौलाना आजाद यूनिवर्सिटी विद अजीज डॉक्टर अजीज बानो एज कन्वीनर डॉक्टर जियाउद्दीन साकिर साहब मोहम्मद मियाँ डॉक्टर मोहम्मद शरफ आलम साहब बहुत खुशी हो रही है आप लोगों को भी खुशी होगी कि इस सब्जेक्ट बीजापुर और इनफैक्ट डेकन हैज बीन अ वेरी न्यू थिंग इन द फील्ड ऑफ आर्ट हिस्ट्री इनफैक्ट द ग्लोरी ऑफ द मुगल हिस्ट्री मुगल कल्चर एंड आर्ट हैज ऑलमोस्ट शेड रोड ओवर शेड रोड वट वॉज अचीव इन द डेकन इट्स ओनली ड्यूरिंग द लास्ट सेवेंटी ईयर्स the quality of the work done in the deccan researches being done in the deccan are very actively by today several foreign scholars have been working on deccan especially bijapur the reason why they have chosen bijapur is that the quality of the bijapuri painters compared to the all three other dynasty the golconda and the nizam shahis is definitely of a superior quality in fact some of the finest bijapur paintings are the costliest indian painting today because very people know that actually they are among the finest not because they are rarest but because of their finest quality in fact the quality of the work by the master painter farooq beg who came from iran joined homai's court at painter mughal court akbar court then slowly he moved to the can why actually there was a lot of appreciation for the arts especially in the time of ibrahim adil shah in fact best of the calligraphers from iran literally went from iran migrated to bijapur as well as to moguls but comparatively more persian painters calligraphers and scholars more to the deccan especially bijapur and golconda because these people had better leanings to her iran and she is the painting in bijapur did not start like the moguls in the mid 16th century in fact there was a constant trouble with the vijayanagar dynasty from the south and there was constant problem and they were busy consolidating their empires and the territories safeguarding their territories but when a consortium of the deccani sultans golconda bijapur and ahmednagar defeated bijapur in 19 vijayanagar in 1565 they were free for involving themselves with a cultural pursuits then in 19 sorry 1570 painting started in a very different form and the quality of work done at bijapur even at that time during ali adil shah's period is of really very very high quality i will start showing among the first painting done in the deccan at bijapur in 1570 this is from a manuscript of nuzumul ulum here you can see the territories of Ahmednagar, Bijapur, Golconda is very clearly demarcated. Next, uh, <coughs> this is a page from a manuscript of Zulu Nulum dated 1517-31. Fortunately, this manuscript has about 800 illustrations. It is in the Chester Valley Library in Dublin. Out of its about 800 illustrations, there are several in partly in French, Iran, and style, but there are others. In Islamic art, you will find in Iran and Arabia that the demons are mostly men. Here, of course, this manuscript has various types of subjects, including the demons. but here the demons are not 
male, but they are female, shown as Rohanis, and these Rohanis. Next one. This is a blows up or close up. Close up, you can see the planet Saturn wearing leaves, loincloth, wearing a crown. But most interesting is the deep blue background against which the white clouds. This is the characteristic of the blue and white China, which via Iran reached India also. Next one. Now, this is one of the finest creation of Bijapur. The finest painting done, a portrayal of Ibrahim Radha Shah at the age of about 10, 20. This is a work of 1590, unfortunately not in any Indian collection, but in Russia in the Academy of Sciences in Leningrad. This is a work of Farooq Beg. This is perhaps one of the 10 or 15 finest paintings uh, if I have to choose, whether Mughal, Rajput, Pahari or any school. If you see the original, this painting is remarkably fine quality. Next one. This is a close-up of portrait, bust portrait of Ibrahim Badr Shah II, who ruled from 1580 to 1626. Because he was fond of music, it is about the age of 18 or 19, that is about, should be 1589, 90, and he, as if he is listening to mu music and he is engrossed in listening it. Next one. This is again a portrait of Ibrahim Badr Shah, slightly older, about 1610. It is in the British Museum. London. Here you can see the dark background, this large foliage and architecture in the background is actually taken from some European sources. And what were the European sources? Actually, it was coming via Goa, which was once part of Vijapur, but European Sorry for the interruption. Now, this painting shows Ibrahim Adisha is holding castanets which are very popular with the folk musicians and also court musicians. And eventually you will see later on that he was a great lover of music. He was a musician himself. In many other paintings you will see here after that he is playing on some instrument or the other. Next one. Now this is a painting done in 1610 by Farooq Beg. This is in the Nefrak Museum in Jakoslovakia. He is playing on some sort of tambour, and there are two other people who are listening to his music. So this sort of thing which proves, at least he used to get himself portrayed either in the company of musicians, company of saints, and others. I mean, now he, of course, the biggest contrast with the Mughal painters and Mughal court etiquette, mode, Mughal taste of the Mughal, actually there is a lot of difference between the likings of the Deccani rulers. Whereas the Mughal like the paintings, glorifying their court, their magnificence, and their court etiquettes. But to that extent, in some cases, because of certain rigidities and formal rules, the painting tend to be slightly stiff, although they may be very, very finely executed. When we compare with Rekni paintings, in fact, that lies the charm in some of these paintings because there is a lot more freedom to the painters in composing. The etiquettes were not so rigid, so relaxed. That you reflect also in the painting. Also, the Rekni rulers were not so much fond of showing their glory and court, but as natural human beings, their day-to-day -day life and other things have been very naturalistically depicted. Next one. Now, again, you will find Ibrahim Badr Shah playing on a musical, very beautiful painting with gold background, Iranian type of tree types, but the very subtle use of gold, very subtle use of whites and pink dress, which the ruler is wearing, is a remarkable painting of the Ibrahim Badr Shah period. Next one. Now, this is actually a portrait of a yogini in Shastrapati Library in about 1595. It's surprising a type of 
Yogini paintings were depicted in the Deccan. Dr. Nigam had also written an article about this theme. Fortunately, there are other views also about why these Yoginis were painted in the Deccan. But mostly, they are shown beautifully dressed, either holding a mana, holding a trident, holding a veena, and things like this. But they are among the finest Deccan paintings of the genre type. Next one. This is the detail of this, the yogini because the grey body is female figure. Next one. Now this is another yogini in our collection. Again the background is profuse, green, dark background, very lush green. In the rear portion, in the background, you will find architectural settings. Now this is a close up, the lady is playing veena. This is a third Yogini painting. All these three Yoginis are in our collection. Here the Yogini is sitting. In case you see the next detail of this, you will find the Yogini is almost as if she is like a peacock. The yellow plantain tree looks as if it's going to help and the Yogini will fly as a bird. Next one. This is the third yogini in our collection. Here she is holding a trident and standing before a Shiva shrine. Next. One of the most important contributions of the Deccani painters during early Ibrahim Adil Shah's second period is this, is this manuscript by the poet Hans, who is rarely known in the Deccani scholars. This is in Deccani Urdu. It has 46 illustrations in the British Museum. This manuscript shows the romance between a prince of India and a princess of Sri Lanka. In fact, this painting shows all the elements of the Bijapuri painting in the end of the 16th century. This work was done in 1591. I wish this manuscript is somehow published by the Malana Azad University as a facsimile because that would be a very, very great contribution of this university to the scholarly world with a bilingual text because pictorially also important, textually also, this is a very, very great manuscript. Next one. Next one. Now, this in fact shows the prince as if pining for the beloved with the image of the beloved as if the image is like a toy. In fact, it's not a toy, but he wants to show that she is always in his heart and an image has been painted there. Next one. This is one more Yogini painting in the Berlin Museum, about 1610. Next one. Again, portrait of Ibrahim Adil Shah II in 1595. This was once in the Bikaner Palace collection, went for Adoni from the loot of Aurangzeb general, a ruler of Bikaner. He looted and this painting went to the Bikaner Palace. This shows a very profuse use of gold, but in fact when the Deccani painters are using gold, it has been subdued, beautifully covered with some detail, so it is not prominent. But now the positioning of the ruler in the forward and the, all the others, so officials are standing behind. That will never happen in any Mughal painting. Next one. This is portrait of Ibrahim Adil Shah's famous elephant Chanchal. He was fond of getting his elephant's portrait. portrait. Apart from his being portrayed as a musician, he got his portrait. This is also a great work of Farooq Beg. Next one. This is another elephant portrait of Ibrahim Badr about 1595. This is in the American collection. Now, this is one of the most important Deccani paintings done for Ibrahim Badr by Farooq Hussein or Beg. This is in the Jaipur Palace collection. Here it shows the goddess Saraswati and he wears. Ibrahim Adil Shah addresses as Ma. This is a really very important painting for the cosmopolitan atmosphere prevailing in the Deccan in the time of Ibrahim Adil Shah. Next one. 
This is a close-up which gives a very clear idea and this also gives a very clear idea of the costumes the ladies in the palace used. Next one. This is actually Ibrahim Baldusha relaxing and some servants are on his side. This is also in the Berlin collection. Now this is also a very, very famous painting. Now in the British Library, this shows a Sufi saint being visited by Ibrahim Badr Shah outside. But this is by Ali Raza, a great painter. Apart from Farooq Beg, Ali Raza was a great painter of Bijapur about 1610-1615. But it's meticulously finished, exquisite painting. Next one. This is also by Ali Zada in British Library. As I told, Ibrahim was fond of getting his elephants painted. So this is one of them. Next one. This is another port portrait of Adil Shah because that area from the Western Ghats it had a lot of elephants. Perhaps Adil Shah has access to the finest elephants found in those areas. Next one. This is another portrait of a, an elephant Thus, is in the Freer Library in Washington, D.C. Now, here, of course, as I had mentioned, Adil Shah used to visit Sufis and saints. This is one of the Thanka or Darga of a Sufi. Next one. This actually page from a Shahnama, where actually a ship is going perhaps near Bhatkal and the whole sea coast, port of the Bijapur kingdom, actually, they had, the artist has some idea how the ships are made and how ships are floating on the sea. Next one. Now, one very important painting is this, to agitated birds. They are not as finely finished as the Mughal portraits of birds done by Miskeen or Ustad Mansur, but this has a life definitely far superior to those works. Whereas the Mughal portraiture of birds is like more, more, more photography, very highly finished. Even with lesser finish, the artist has captured the mood of these birds fantastically and superbly. Next, this is in the Musée Guimet Paris. This is another page from a manuscript. Here you will find the movement birds, they are not very statically portrayed and depicted in the landscape because each one is busy in its own activity, picking fish or something against a golden background, beautifully executed. Next one. Now here you can see the movement portrayal very carefully done. Now this is a Christian theme of Maroon and Child in the Freer Library about 1625. Next one. Now again in Bijapur, Golconda and even Mughal and Rajput they suddenly developed a tendency for making composite animals, horses, elephants, camels, and here this camel is composed of various figures, and somehow some of these are associated with the Sufi theme, but whatever was the reason, they can, the artist could compose with a lot of freedom, fantastic animals and birds, because outwardly they may look the portrayal of an, any animal, but inside it was composed of varieties of figures, human beings and animals. Next one. Now this is a marble painting in Hyderabad in our museum. Actually, I've been researching on the marble painting themes. Somehow this sort of technique, instead of marbling on paper, which started in Turkey and Persia in mid 16th century, somehow reached taken about late 16th century, because we know of an artist working for the Khan Khana library in the end of 16th century. But actually they were used either as a border for the manuscript, here the complete painting com created by using the marbling technique. They are, so far I have calculated only 27 paintings in all the museums all over the world. Fortunately, Hyderabad has three. Now the next one is in the Salarje Museum. This is a Sufi with a cat. Here the body is composed, created by using marbling, only the face and some part is finished by painting. Next one. 
Now, we start with the rule of Sultan Muhammad Adil Shah, 1626-56. He was also a great patron, but he was also a patron of art. He created many monuments and buildings, but the quality of painting which the painters of Ibrahim Adil Shah could achieve could never be achieved, but yet they have a quality of their own. Next one. Now this is Muhammad Ali Shah seated with his minister on an elephant. This is in Sir Howard's Hodgkin Collection, London. Here the name of artist is given. Now this is Ali Adil Shah's court portrait. Here as I had mentioned, actually the Mughal court culture, the etiquette was such that this is after this bar, the Panch Hazari will stand, the th three Hazaris and like this. So the other ministers and officials are sitting around as if it is a Jamindar's court. Although they were very rich and prosperous rulers, but they had not very, that's why some of the paintings could be very rich in composition. Next one. This again a portrait of Ali Adil Shah II. That is after 56 to 72. This is also Ali Adil Shah II. This is also Ali Adil Shah seated with the beloved in the mango garden. This is a family group portrait of the Adil Shah dynasty. All the rulers are sitting on the right side, actually find the last one is Sikandar Adil Shah, actually in, during his time, the Bijapuri kingdom was annexed by Aurangzeb, but seems to be a very young prince of 13 and 14 years. Next one. Sorry. I think here I end.